Hi kids! This video is about atoms and the components that make up atoms called subatomic particles and the material groups that are going to be relevant in our discussion of electricity known as conductors and insulators. The essential question is what are the subatomic particles and how do they behave in different materials? So you've probably learned in a previous science class about atoms, which are basically the building block of all matter. Uh, so far, scientists know of 115 types of atoms, and we call these the elements. Um, the elements sort of, you know, combine together in different ways. If you take that ant there and then zoom in on a cell and then zoom in again, probably using a scanning electron microscope, you eventually get down to these little tiny spherical shaped things. Um, and those are the atoms. You can see the scale there is really tiny, one nanometer. So the word subatomic refers to something smaller than an atom. And it, for a long time, scientists didn't think you could break atoms apart. But it turns out that if you hit them with enough energy, that they actually will break into parts too. And the components of an atom, or the subatomic particles, are known as the protons, the neutrons, and the electrons. The common classical um, image of an atom is shown there on the screen. There's a really dense core in the middle, which is comprised of protons and neutrons. And then you've got these electrons flying around the outside of the atom. Each one of these little particles has some fundamental properties that will give it um, the ability to interact with other objects, such as mass. So each one of those has its own little tiny gravitational pull and each one has a property known as charge as well. The two subatomic particles that we're going to be focusing on in this class are protons and electrons. The neutron um, you'll learn about in other physics classes. It's, it's um, really important in the area of radioactivity, but it has uh, a neutral charge, so it doesn't really come into play with electricity very often. In any case, um, protons and electrons do, so please make a quick table to kind of compare and contrast some of the properties of those two subatomic particles. Protons are much, much bigger than electrons, so um, even though they're tiny, we typically describe them as very heavy. And electrons, on the other hand, are teeny tiny, like 10 to the many, many, many times smaller than the protons in terms of mass. The protons live in the middle of the nucleus of the atoms. Um, and for our purposes in this class, you'll never be removing them from the nucleus. Uh, if you pull a proton out of the nucleus, you have what's called a nuclear explosion, and that tends to be a big problem, so we won't be doing that in this class. Electrons, on the other hand, um, are moving around pretty freely. They orbit around the outside of the atom, as you saw in that last picture, and they can even move from atom to atom, so they get to move around a lot, and so that's why they are typically the basis of electricity. One thing that's sort of the same about protons and electrons is this property called charge. Um, a proton has exactly the same amount of charge as an electron, although we call the protons positive and the electrons negative, so opposite in sign, but the same amount. So even though the proton is much, much bigger, it actually has the same amount of charge as an electron, um, so they're equally sort of strong in terms of electricity. The property of charge is the property that underlies um, the electrostatic force, or F sub E. The electric static force is uh, measured in newtons, just like every other force. And along with gravitation, it's actually, um, I would say, one of the two most significant of the fundamental forces that we see in our daily life. Uh, you learned about a bunch of other forces in the last unit, normal force, tension, spring, and friction. but if you zoom in on those forces enough and you understand the physics, you'll discover they're actually all come into play because of this idea of um, interaction between charged objects. So all those other forces are actually electrostatic. We just call them different things because they tend to manifest a little bit differently in the real world. Electrostatic force is really similar to gravity in a lot of ways. Um, Gravity depends on an object's mass, the electric or the two objects that are interacting, both of their masses. 
electrostatic force depends on the two objects and how charged they are. So how many extra protons or electrons exist on each of those charged objects. And both forces, gravitation and the electrostatic force, uh, also have an inverse relationship with the distance between the two objects. So uh, the equations for those two forces are really similar, except for that gravity depends on mass and electrostatic force depends on the charge of the two objects. One thing that is a little different has to do with the direction of those two forces. Gravitation is always attractive. It only can pull things together. But the electrostatic force can be attractive or repulsive. Um, when you have two oppositely charged objects, like shown in that first example right here, I've got that positively charged object and negatively charged object, they are going to attract each other, which means pull towards each other. And when we have systems that have like charged objects, like two electrons there, they're going to push apart. Or if we have two protons, they are also going to be pushing apart, which is sometimes called repel. You'll notice that the magnitude or the size of that force is the same on both of those objects, regardless of how big they are or how charged they are, because Newton's third law says that every force has an equal and opposite force. So that's a Newton's third law force pair. One object is attracted to the other, and the other one is attracted back the same amount. So now that we understand a little bit about the uh, subatomic particles that make up materials, I want to talk about a couple different types of materials that are really relevant in this unit. And these are called conductors and insulators. In general, no matter what kind of material we're talking about, the protons are stuck in the nucleus of the atom. And so that means it's going to stay constant. We're, we're not pulling protons in or out, or we're going to be changing the kind of atom or the element that we're talking about. So the elements are, are all going to stay the same. However, the electrons, as we mentioned earlier, are free to move about. And the property conductivity describes how free those electrons are to move, how, how, um, how difficult or easy it is for them to move from one atom to another. So an insulator is a material that has a low amount of conductivity, or sometimes I think about this as something you could safely stick into a light socket. In insulating materials, the nuclei of the atoms are really, really attracted to their electrons. They hold those electrons tightly to them and don't let them sort of escape or roam. You'll see that I've drawn this insulator with these boundaries because they kind of don't let their electrons stray very far from the protons of the cells. So electrons are moving around inside the individual atoms but they aren't escaping out of the atoms. They're not moving from one atom to the other because they're held so tightly by their protons. Conductors, on the other hand, or materials with high conductivity, um, are generally things you should not stick into a light socket. And the reason is because the atoms in conductors don't hold on to their electrons. Electrons can move easily through the entire material. The electrons are shared. They don't belong to any particular atom. And they can also easily move on or off of the material or other conductors too. That moving on or off of a large quantity of electrons is known as an electric shock. So if you've ever been shocked, um, probably it happened because a large quantity of those electrons moved from one object to another between two conductors, generally speaking. Okay, so please take a few minutes and revisit the essential question. Uh, jot down any other questions that might have come up as you watch this video, but the essential question is what are the subatomic particles and how do they behave in different materials? Thanks for watching.